And we're live. Welcome back to the Wood by Wright shop, or uh, not the shop in this case, um, but we're here live at the Midwest Tool Collectors Association National, not National, but the Peach Meet. This is the biggest tool sale in the South. It happens every year here in Madison, Georgia. Uh, we're at the Lions Club. And if any of you are near and want to come out for this, uh, you can see this room is full of tools for sale. Uh, you can come and join the Midwest Tool Collectors today and then come on in. Uh, you do have to be a member to come here so that way we can save on um, insurance and taxes and things like that. But I want to do a walkthrough and show you what uh, is in here. Uh, also, if you would like to find meets like this, they are literally all over the United States, all over the world. Uh, if you go to mwtca.org, you can see where all the Midwest Tool Collectors meets are at. Um, and then on my, on my website, I have a resource where you can see uh, what's one for, where you can see all the places I know of where to buy hand tools, where the other collecting clubs are around the United States um, and the world, or in other countries as well. So uh, you would be surprised. Most people are within a few hours drive of one of these, or at least uh, most people who are watching this. Uh, I know there's a lot of you who are in like uh, Western Europe or Australia or Africa that these aren't everywhere, but if you're in the U.S., you're probably within a few hours drive from one of these. So uh, let's actually dive in and take a look at some of the tools for sale today. If any of you have any questions, uh, go ahead and throw them up. Love to see. Hey, we got uh, quite a few people in here already. So this is one of my favorites where we got just boxes of random tools, hammers, mallets, some really interesting ones. I love these. <laughs> look at that little thing. Two-handed, uh, two-headed. Okay, let's do it that way. That's kind of cute. Yeah, all hand tools. Uh, well, I mean, there's there's a couple power tools in here, but I mean, it's here. I'll, I'll give you another pan around. So all of this. Woo, down, 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 down. There we go. All of this is all hand tools. So I'm gonna actually do a walkthrough of the whole thing as soon as I get this to work for me. Down, there we go. I'm gonna try on a uh, swivel pod here so that the image is a little bit more stable. Another spoke shave. That's actually pretty cool. Um, this is just like a grab box. Some of these boxes are like everything in here a dollar, everything in here five dollars. Hardy tools, stamping tools. Levels, wrenches, lots of wrenches. Yeah, if any of you have any questions, throw them up there. I'm going to try and catch them. Um, if I don't catch them, then feel free to post it again. And this one's kind of cool right here. It's a basically a driver. <laughs> that is cool. You know what that is? Oh, it's a wrench for uh, driving in. Buggy wrench. Oh, for buggies. Yeah. There that you. one, this one, this one, this one. Are all buggies. That's one. this one. One of the things I love about coming to these meets, you walk up something, it's like, what is that? And there's always someone around who can tell you, give you the history behind it. Mm -hmm. Tool stores around Boston. Are, yeah, there's a lot around Boston. Boston is kind of a, a hotbed of tools. Um, especially when you go up by Philadelphia, there's a lot of there's several tool so, tool um, stores that are just devoted to antique hand tools. Uh, wrenches and shifters. Yeah, actually, there's quite a few wrenches here. Then there's uh, these display tables. So this one is um, Ohio Tool Company, and so he's showing off his collection of Ohio two co Tool Company planes, so you can actually learn about it and see how they've changed over time, some of the different things that they've made. And some of these displays are actually really interesting, going through the history of tools, and you can learn a lot about them over here. I wanted to show you a couple of these displays over here before we start moving into those tools. This one is really cool. Stanley Level and Rule uh, spoke shaves, uh, not spoke shaves, uh, marking gauges. It goes through all the different types and different versions of the different types and different things on every one of them. And they're just, it's fascinating to go through this and actually learn about them, how they were made, what they changed over time. Surveyor's tools. This is an interesting one for you. This is surveyor's tape measure, basically. Um, and so this is a chain that they can lay out, and there's these brass markers on it that then measure out different distances. So a surveyor could use that to measure out hundreds and hundreds of feet. Some more 
surveyor's tools. Uh, this is uh, tools made by Kerry uh, McCalla. McCalla? Um, and so he actually, it was a, a maker, and he was gone through and spent a long time collecting tools made by him. These are tools for uh, working on Henry, uh, on uh, Ford Model Ts um, and others. And then, of course, the wrench. Um, this is the one that we've been talking about, the wrench. This thing is um, almost five foot long. So, yeah, um, let's actually start going through some of these tools for sale. And we're going to be working around a few people here, so if I kind of poke in. Um, a lot of molding planes on here. If I stop, I'm probably trying to read the comments. <laughs> People come through. It's not quite as busy as it was yesterday. Uh, there was a tool sale outside. The one outside is usually the, the cheaper, easier tools. So, tool uh, chisel walls. Anyone want... Uh, Carving tools, chisels, some file, high file. Yeah, I would love to see other events like this you need in Europe. And if you want to start Midwest Tool Collectors Meet, we need someone there to organize it. Um, that's all we need is someone to set up the location and get it going. It won't be this big the first year, but once the word gets out and I can do some advertising and say, hey, everyone in Europe, you can come on over here. Um, we just need someone on the ground to set up an event like this, and you can have it. Lots of cute little ads. That is pretty. Some mortising chisels and others. A couple bedrocks. There's a 608. Oops, sorry, move up a little bit. And then we got more stuff up here. Marking gauges. Now these are the types of things why I love coming to these tool meets. Not only learning about the tools and learning about the history, but uh, most of this, all of this is for sale. <laughs> More planes, everybody's favorite. Hey, an early type. I have, I have a video on restoring one of these. And uh, oh, it still has the handle. Man, I wish I had a... I wish I could find the handle for it. Yeah. And mine broke off and I replaced it with a wooden chunk. Yeah. <laughs> it works, but... A couple infills. Everybody likes the infills. Do you find a pocket hole bit? No, I have not found a pocket hole bit. Sorry, I'm live on YouTube right now. <laughs> so I'm talking to three people at once. <laughs> Trying to show other people what they're missing. Chittles, molding planes. Everybody likes the molding planes. Cool. All right, let's come on around over here. There's some sweet things on here. Look at this fro. Beautiful old fro. The mall that would then drive the fro. Something similar in Europe. Yeah, I'll, you, if you guys want something in Europe, all you have to do is start one. Um, there are several Midwest tool collectors meets that are in other countries, and we can get one set up. We just need someone on the ground to pick the location get it going. Um, we've had a couple people recently do that and step up and just say I'll run one and they can find the location to host it and we can do the advertisement and get people out there. There are tool sellers in Europe but there's just no standard place for them to get together. So yeah if you want something like this near you you can set one up. Um, contact the Midwest Tool Collectors. There's a cool ads. That is pretty. That I like. There's the, the handle for the ads. Let's come on through here. Flush cut saw. This one, the, the saw plate will swing around to both sides so you can cut on either side of the handle if you're up against something. 
A couple back saws. There are a lot of back saws here today. Some old wooden braces. I didn't buy mine. And more braces. Brass back braces. Some really old style braces. These are really cool. Um, yeah, blacksmith made braces. Stanley number 12. And aluminum and A6. Don't see those very much. Yeah, I have an ads diction. <laughs> oh, this is on my uh, my my list. The uh, um, shooting board plane. That is one of these days. I'm gonna pick one of those up. The price on them is more than I've got right now. But one day, one day I will. Yeah, there's actually several of these shows in Indiana. Anyone want a 62? He doesn't have a price on it, but I'm guessing somewhere 300 or so. That's a beautiful infill mortising plane. Not mortising, uh, um, shooting plane. <laughs> Marking gauges. Here's some big old spoke shows. Hey, John, if you're watching, John gave me one very similar to this one, and I haven't seen anything like it before. And as a huge beast, one of these, it's on my list to restore. Um, massive, massive spoke shave. Kind of cool. I haven't seen one before, and I saw it today, and it really made me think about it. i got to get back to that. Big set of dividers here. Stanley number nine. <clears throat> That's the number. Thank you. <laughs> the next one made. Pattern maker's gouges. Some beautiful old plow plans. Check these out. And this, this one is kind of interesting. This, uh, this is a float. It's a pattern, a, a plane maker's float. And so this would actually get down in the mouth of a thin plane, like this one. And you could then plane out the the bed that the iron would sit on with one of those. Lots of fun tools for sale today. So if you're drooling right now, I'm sorry, you can clean up your phone. <laughs> oh, these, these are beautiful. These are old molding planes, but they're tiny little things. Beautiful. So let's move on over here. It's getting a little busy back over here. Let's see if we can slide in. More molding planes. I had a spill plane here the other day that I was looking at buying, but then someone else got it. So I collect spill planes. So if anyone has a spill plane they want to show me. <laughs> I bought one yesterday. There's another one over there I'm looking at. We'll see. Yeah, actually, um, there are. there's actually a collection of pattern maker planes. We'll get to it a little later back over there. Um, but there are some cool pattern makers. That's a beautiful old saw. Beautiful beast. Another ads. <laughs> Molding planes. Horn. Another great brace. Oh, check out this brace. That is beautiful. Let's come on over here. Some more spoke shapes. Chisels. Slick. I'm looking at a slick around the other table that I might buy here later. Some more planes. Can never be enough planes. Lots of Stanleys, a couple of aluminums. Bedrock. Want a good user? Number four. Needs a little bit of love. Yes, I, uh, I'm happy here, if you can tell. We got some carving chisels. How does the chuck work on the wooden braces? Uh, let me go look at this one, actually. This one, yeah, this one is a, uh, uh, a plug. So you got this square head in there that then you would have a wooden bit. Is this one tapered? 
Yeah, this one's tapered. Uh, so oh, he's got them right down here. So this one has these huge, long, tapered bits. Uh, some of them, you would have a wooden plug that you would then put your bits on, and so you would create the connection between your bit and your, your brace. But these ones have this really long shaft that goes into that one. How much wood? What would you get? Okay, let's come on over here. There's another eight. Some chasing mounts. More planes. Ooh, there's a number one. Is that Lee? Yep. Okay. Let's see what we got over here. Another compass down in there. Some levels. Oops, sorry, down a little too low. Peach meat. I'm assuming this is in. Yes, we are in Madison, Georgia, right now. Just, uh, just east of uh, Atlanta. So if any of you do want to come out, you're close enough, you can come out, join the Midwest Tool Collectors today, and uh, come on in. You do have to be a member, um, and we do that so that we don't have to mess with taxes, we don't have to mess with the insurance, so you have to be a member to come to one of these. But it's 25 bucks a year, and then you get invited to these meets all around the United States. So uh, it's well well worth the 25 a year. Um, How much is he selling the number one? Oh, this number one, I think, is a... Is that a Lee Nielsen? No. Yeah, it is a Lee Nielsen. So it's not a Stanley number one. It's just a, a Lee Nielsen. Um, I wasn't sure if it was a different uh, manufacturer, but... Yeah, there's, there's a couple number ones here. Oops, sorry, going down. Up oh, there we go. There are a few number ones, but... Uh, there were a bunch of router planes yesterday. I know one guy picked up three, and this guy picked up one. And I haven't seen many today. There's there's a couple odd style ones, but none of them are the that, like any ones. No, it's fine. <laughs> Oh, that's kind of cool. What's the average price I have won and was wondering the value of a Stanley number one? Um, <laughs> if it's in poor quality, 800. If it's in great quality, 1700. But usually right around 1000 is normal for Stanley number one. Um, they are the most expensive, worthless tool. <laughs> Books, catalogs, information. So a lot of times people will be selling old um, catalogs where you can uh, buy them, uh, where, where they were originally sold, so you can see the prices and how things were originally listed. Old style chisels, mallet, uh, anvils, pieces still in their box. Uh oh, we got an electric tool here. <laughs> but here's an anvil. There's, uh, there's one guy here who has like five or six anvils out in his truck. Um, some really nice ones. Let's come on over here. We're not even halfway through this place yet. Um, oh yeah, natural stone. That's pretty. Big old auger bits. I would love to have an anvil around the shop. I, I want to get into doing some blacksmithing, but I haven't yet. Let's come on. Around the back, they this way. Over the place. <laughs> yeah, these are always fun. If you can see it, you can actually flip the iron around and go from both ways, so you could get right up next to something or have the standard block plane mouth. Yep. And, uh, and a lot of cool interventions. What's well, funny, I, I had um, a German knockoff. There's a fun saw. Yeah, <laughs> is. there a history behind that? Uh, not for me. Just like a weird back saw hack saw. <laughs> hey, a bench hook. We're cutting fairly large diameter pipes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So that you know you can keep the blade straight. This is the 
would be handy to have a little in there. Anyone looking for back saws? There's actually quite a few back saws at this one. They're, they're, they're harder to come by here. Um, and I bought one yesterday outside. Um, this one's pretty. Good old distant. Yeah, the handle on this one, the form factor, so the thumb comes around here and uh, the index finger can then wrap around the handle. Feels really weird. What's the price range on back saws? Um, most of these are in the 100 to 250 range. Um, back saws are not cheap. And when I tell people getting into woodworking, don't go out and buy an antique back saw. You're, just, you're not gonna get your money's work for a user. These are collectible. Don't don't buy a back saw. I mean, go get one from like uh, Veritas. You can buy a brand new one for uh, what 75 bucks, and you can have a brand new working dovetail saw. It, it's cheaper than buying an antique one. Uh, these are these are not for for use. They're for collecting. Uh, now that being said, I have one that I'm going to be restoring, uh, but yeah, they're they're not. Yeah, I bought a bunch of stuff, so I'm going to be shipping it back. I have to go to the pack and ship store later today to pack it all up and ship it back to my place. But well worth it. Beautiful old cleaver. Hey, Dylan's, how's it going? Hey, that one even has a depth stop still. <laughs> the depth stop or the uh, the fence is worth more than the rest of the plane. What's that thing with two saw handles? Let me see what you're looking at. That thing with two saw handles. Oh, this. It's a stair saw. Um, but the teeth all go this way. Oops, sorry. So the teeth all go this way. So sometimes you want to pull it and sometimes you want to push it. It's the stair saw. Um, it's, it's rare to have the two handles on a stair saw, but someone decided they wanted it, so someone made it. This is more like a standard stair saw. So there'd be a, a pushing rod over here and a handle on the other side. Now let's get over here to all of these planes, and there's actually a Stanley number one over here. Howdy. Um, here's a couple bedrocks. And bedrocks, um, there's, there's a lot of things that the bedrock does that the regular ones don't. The casting is a little thicker. The frog has a better seat on the main sole, which is why it gave it the name bedrock. Um, but for general user's sake, there's not a huge difference between regular Stanley and bedrock, though bedrock does feel a little better. Uh, yeah, they're worth more, too. They're, they're very collectible. Here's the Stanley number one. And let's see what he's asking on this one. Uh, 950. 950 actually is not a bad price for a Stanley number one, but to give you an idea of size, that's my hand behind this thing. This is a Stanley number one. <laughs> I was I was at one of these tool sales a while ago, and the guy uh, the guy had three Stanley number ones sitting out on the table. And I said, "Wow, I've never seen so many number ones in one place." And he reaches under his table and he pulls out a bin with a dozen more. <laughs> oh, you've got a lot. <laughs> Pretty, pretty plain. Let's see what else we've got on this table. Uh, a couple infills back here. A couple compass planes. Here's a router. Good old hag's tooth. A couple plow planes. Yeah, old hag's tooth. Old hag's tooth. That would be nicer. <laughs> Another seven. Actually, it's the Winchester version of it. See Winchester on there. The Stanley number 11. Actually, I came across a Stanley number one once. Um, I was, it was a, a Craigslist listing, and she had like five different planes sitting on the table. And it was a number four, a number five, a number three, and a number one. So I immediately called her up and said, can I come look at it? She said, yeah, come on over and take a look at it. And I went over there, and like five minutes before me, someone else came over and bought the number one. So sad. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, here, check this out. This is a, a set of hollows and rounds. You bought a number one for 25 bucks. I hate you. 
One of these days I want to get a set of hollows and rounds and do a video showing how to do molding with those. Shan Rogers has a, has a few videos on it, but a set of these can do an amazing, amazing things. Yeah, often the, the fence, the fence and depth stop uh, for these cost almost as much as the rest of the plane, if not more than the rest of the plane sometimes. They're, they're very hard to come by. Yeah, here's the, uh, the swing arm tongue and groove planes that I did a video on yesterday, the day before. Bunch of block planes. There's a guy around here with a box underneath that has a, a pile of old block planes. Some more aluminums. There are a lot of aluminums here. I always look underneath some transitionals. Oops, sorry. A lot of these tables have extra things down here. Stanley 55, box cutters. Now this one, Stanley 45, with all the cutters, the original box, even the screwdriver. These screwdrivers are hard to come by. Uh, no, uh, Veritas makes a riveting block plane. Um, I think um, uh, Wood River makes a rabbiting block plane now. Hardware, sickle. Check out this spokeshave here with the uh, the bone inlay. Now, Paolo, um, if you uh, want one in your country, you can start one. Just contact the Midwest Tool Collectors, and you can start a meeting like this near you. We just need someone on the ground to set up a location and get the organization going. And I can do advertisement, and we can get people there to do a show like this near you. So if you don't have one near you, um, start one. Hey, and we're live again. Sorry about that. Had to fix it up. Um, but let's take you back around. Yeah, um, someone was just saying we should have one like this in Texas. There is one in Texas. There's one in Houston. Uh, but I'd like to get a couple of them in Texas. So if you have a location for this and you want to host them, um, go ahead and set that up. But yeah, here, check this out. These are uh, spiles that you could drive into a maple tree. And you hang a bucket on it, and the, the sap comes through and out. Um, and so I've never seen them this small before. I mean, the ones I've used in the past look something more like this. Those are just kind of cool. I've never seen anything like that. So I'm going to catch up on these comments. Where can you find dates? Because I'm near Houston. Um, go on the Midwest Tool Collectors website. Um, the, all of them are listed on there. The one in Houston was, I want to say in August, because I went down for that one. Yeah, you should set one up in Dallas, Fort Worth. That would be a fantastic place. We just need someone to set up the location, and we can make it happen. We had uh, quite a few people come down for the one in, in Houston. That was fun. Some more molding planes. Oops, sorry. So, oh, here's some medallions. I might come back and snag one of these. Yeah, I'm going to come back and grab one of those. I want one of that for those. I have a saw I'm restoring. Hammers, rules. Don't need a membership to... Yes, you need to be a member of the Midwest Tool Collectors to join. Um, and so if anyone is near uh, Madison, Georgia, and you want to come today, you can come today. You just have to join and be a member uh, when you arrive. Um, and then you can you, you can you pay the interest fee and come in. Um, so yes, you have to be a member, and that's how we get around insurance and taxes um, and other things like that. But once you're a member, then you also get invites to all of the meetings. Um, so we don't publish where the meetings are at. Uh, we just send those out and invite members, so that's um, a little bit different, but it's, it is the best way to do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What are the prices usually like there? No, uh, the, the prices you're going to find at these are reasonable. Um, everyone here knows what they have. 
you're not going to be pulling someone over, pulling something over on its own because people know what the specialty of that tool is. And sometimes people come here and they're like, wow, the prices are so crazy. Well, they're looking at the collectible items. There's things here that are rare, that are hard to find, that are collectible, and those are expensive. Like a Stanley number one, a thousand dollars for a little hand plane like that that's worthless for a user. Um, it sounds crazy, but it's collectible, and there's a lot of people who will definitely pay that, so it's a good price for it. Um, most of the time here, you're going to find good to fair. You're going to find a lot of people who are getting rid of their collections and getting rid of old things, and sometimes they'll be good to deal with and have good prices. You're never going to find something that's exorbitantly expensive unless someone's just showing it off. Um, the prices here are good to fair. Let me see if there's any comments before I continue on. Yeah, you, you don't get to know where the meat's at. They'll tell you what the city is in where the meats are at, but they don't tell you where the meat is at unless you're a member. A bunch more molding planes. This beast is crazy heavy, incredibly thick plate, <laughs> thick rack. That, that, that's a cool saw. Is that... Yeah, for some reason, Record copied my hand planes and painted them blue. A bunch more uh, plow planes, a whole set of irons. Here's some more inbox tools. Spoke shades. Whole piles of spoke shades. You want that particular one? You can find it. I've got one that I was looking for, and I found a guy over here. So I'm thinking about going over and getting it in a bit. We'll see. Tape measures. A couple of the, uh, the Levi toy tools. Now, these are. Um, tongue and groove planes like the ones I showed yesterday except for they push opposite directions so pushing one direction is a tongue pushing the other direction is a plane is their prices uniques that's the way to do it I don't know what you mean by is prices uniques sorry man this kind of swap meet is the only yeah well you I mean most of all of these you can find on eBay but you're gonna pay the nose on eBay it's crazy expensive all right here's another 62. A plane that historically wasn't very useful, but the power tool people really love these, and so the price of them has gone through the roof. Number two, fours, block planes. There's some uh, transitionals halfway between the middle. That's beautiful. Oh, check this out. He has all of these handles and knobs for sale. Beautiful. So, yeah, where's the, is there a Stanley number one knob on here? Uh, there may be a one. There was one earlier, but, yeah. Uh, Alan bought about two. two yeah, I think they're all gone. <laughs> yesterday. Just showing, two signs. I was just going to show the, the number one and show people what the size difference is. Oh, the number one. Y'all know. Any planes or meetings of sorts in? Um, yeah, I'll be at the the Loves Park meeting because uh, that's just down the road from me. So these um, are yeah. Oh here, these check are redos. Those are remands. This is the Stanley number. Whoop, Stanley number one. Look how that is in my hand. I mean, can you imagine trying to grip that? There's but there's the knob. Oh, yeah. it's all the one. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Hey. Well, yeah, this is. This is the type of thing, so if you're looking for parts for the plane to make things work, you can find what meets like this. Hey, Kevin, how's it going? Let's come over here. Oh, check out this. This slick is actually a bit of a gouge, and there's a bit of a curve to it. Brace and a bunch of center bits. Now, these bits are kind of weird, because it looks like the tip is off-center, but there's one knicker and one uh, uh, diamond uh, triangular tip that drive in. I want to do a video on showing those off sometime. Some gouges. I just bought uh, one of these corner chisels for uh, doing some framework, and I want to pull one of those out. Stanley 40. The price on these scrub planes has gone through the roof. 
Yeah, there are a lot of unique tools here that are just rare things that are hard to find. Like this. This is a, a Stanley uh, measuring tool. Is it missing? Oh, it's missing that. But it's got a thousand little extras that go into this. So you got like, I don't remember how many tools there is in one. Um, but yeah, just weird things like that that you don't come across. And if you don't know about it, then you just ask the guy behind the table. Yeah, there are quite a few tools here that are really rare. Oh, then check out this one. Someone took, I'm guessing, a Stanley 4 and just chopped the nose off it, turned it into a chisel plane. They did a good job of chopping the nose off, but that's... That's unique. <laughs> Some slicks. Ten dollars for number four. You got to steal. Some big old wrenches. Braces. Oh, this one's cool. This one is a ratcheting uh, uh, breast drill, and uh, this will ratchet so you can you can drill one way or drill the other way, or you can have it set up so that it will drill no matter which way you spin the handle. This will still turn the correct way. Uh, really cool. Another compass plane. More brace drills. Some more spoke shaves. Is that? Oh no, it's not. I was hoping it was Miller Falls. Oops, sorry. Down a little too low. Some juniors. Sevens and eights. Are you spending more money? I'm trying. <laughs> Stanley number eight. Stanley sevens. Get out of your way. Slicks. Yes, um, a slick is. Well, here I'll, I'll show you a slick in a minute. There's one down here I'm looking at. Um, yes, I'm thinking about buying that one. <laughs> now I'll show you slicks here in a minute. This is uh, this ads is actually a ship ads. It's got these wings on it so you can cut cross grain, and it'll sever the fibers in the side as well as pairing out. Kind of cool. Yeah, if you want knobs for your uh, router plane. Yeah, we've got three slicks over there. Yeah, they all, they all cost more than that. Yeah. Oh, did you buy it? Nice. Do you want to tell people what you paid? Or you don't want to tell people? No, you don't want to tell people what you paid? Okay. My wife might be watching. <laughs> I did a great job. I uh, hit the yard sales. What's that funky blade tool at the left? Funky blade tool at the left. I don't know. Unless you're talking about this thing. This is a scorp. And so you would put handles on here. And then you'd use this to clean out like chair bottoms and things like that. This thing is a miter shear. So you can put um, boards in here and shear them off at 45 degrees or whatever. <laughs> Don says, I'm going to tell her. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> A whole bunch more molding planes. Some panel gauges. These are some unique pieces you don't see very often. Yeah, this, this is a slick. So it's basically like a large chisel and you use for timber framing. It allows you to get into, or basically it's a plane for timber framing, but usually with a large handle and usually like 10 pounds. Um, and they're, they're, they're solid pieces of steel, but they're, they're just as sharp as a chisel and you make them as, as keen and sharp as you can with a long handle. It allows you to plane things smooth inside of a joint. Basically a big chisel for big framing. Well, it's a molding plane. Um, we will here. You look at these. These are molding planes, and molding planes all have a molding, so they have this <coughs> or shape on them. And it's basically what you do before you had a router. You could run that down a board and create whatever profile you wanted on the router on the plane. <laughs> My wife won't let me buy any more hammers. Sorry, man. <laughs> But yeah, a slick is kind of cool. I want to get into doing some uh, timber framing videos, so I need to buy a slick. Um, I've got a few things. Need some more. Let's come on over in here. Oh yeah, here's a 
a box of plane, uh, block planes. I bought one out of there. But there's some really good deals in there for just standard block planes. More tools. Interesting. Oh, here, I'll show you this. Let's see if I can get around some people here. It's starting to get a little packed. Had a plan on both sides. And uh, next month, there's going to be one outside of Milwaukee. Now here's another Stanley number one. But it was different than most all the regular you see there. Interesting. Yeah, he won a part for one of your planes. He was always a hucker for any label. That is fun. I looked at this for a couple times for a couple parts that I want. Yeah, these are um, these are uh, display anvils. So they would be for the traveling salesman could show what the anvil forms are and sell them, and then they'd be shipped out. Yeah, there there were um, there were a lot of router planes here yesterday. Several of them were sold. Um, I haven't seen any today. I think they were all sold. Um, but yeah, um, Tim actually got a crazy good deal on a router plane. Um, it, it had everything with it, it was just missing two of the irons. Um, but everything else, you know, most of the things are normally missing. Um, I, I was jealous. He got a good deal on that. Let's see, did I miss any comments? Collecting mini anvils. Yeah, those things actually are kind of pricey. Small block planes, chariot planes, little squirrel tail. A cute little squirrel tail. Oh, that's cool. Rules, levels. The handle on this is cool. I think I saw this at one of the other meets. What's the best plane to have when you start woodworking? A plane. Uh, number four, number five, just get a, a user. Uh, they, uh, they'll, they'll treat you well. Some people will say number four, some people will say number five, but whatever's the best plane is the plane you have in your hand. And you'll soon have more, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, scroll saw. That thing is pretty. I'm looking forward to getting back and finishing my scroll saw. I was hoping to have finished it this last week, but didn't get around to it. And we got more chisels. I just brought my big uh, here's an old uh, dog. What are those rabbit planes selling for? Uh, let me see, which rabbit plane were you looking at? I think you were looking at one over there. I'll have to go take a look at it. I'll see when I come back through. Yeah, check out this uh, caliper set from that all the way around to these that are huge. Um, beautiful caliper sets. Now, this is, is this Let me see if there's a rabbit plane over here. I don't know which one you were talking about. Um, yeah, I don't know which rabbit plane you were talking about. Now, here's some more, mostly users. 15, 25, 20 bucks, 35 for a good one. Stare it. Um, these are all good planes, they just need to be restored. Uh, they're, they're great quality. Or parts. You should be able to find a four or five for under $25. Yeah, yeah, they're, those are fours and fives you can find just about anywhere. Yeah, antique shop shops tend to make things really pricey. I don't buy a whole lot there, but sometimes I find some interesting things there. Yeah, that's Stanley great Bedrock, six oh four and a half. Come across those all that often. That's a nice one. Great sergeant. Some more plow planes. Beautiful old plow planes. Coffin planes. Old style coffin smoothers. Here's a uh, Stanley Five. Uh, oh, it's the early bedrock. Sergeant. Oh, here. Here's the axe I was trying to show off yesterday, and the the carving on this is is really cool. The casting. But there's some history on the uh, the firefighter's axe. Um, some chisel heads. Some lever caps, 
locks and other items. And down here, there's, whoop, come on, tenders, wrenches, spoke shaves, levels. We've got hammers. What kind of axe is that? Did you say it is actually a, uh, uh, a celebratory axe? So it wasn't intended to be an axe, but it was intended to be a, uh, a gift for our um, firefighter um, uh, acknowledgement. Kind of cool. Yeah. You know my dip on shore? Yeah, here's an old jeweler's uh, lathe. So you mount this to your bench and then have your motor that would run it. Some more cool things. Okay, let's come on over here. And I bought a, um, a spill plane from here yesterday. A couple other things. This big piece back here. Really cool saw. Scorp. Stanley 45. Yeah, most of the tools at the inside meet are, are a little bit better. They tend to be the... Ah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I don't know why my live kicked out again. But I got up and running again. So... Yeah, um, let's keep on going here. Some more block planes. Some uh, shoulder planes. Cute little shoulder planes. A bunch of block planes. Want some extra parts for your Stanley 45? Here's some more slicks. Another swing arm tongue and groove. Some more beautiful planes. Another 45. 78. Uh, that one has the fence, but doesn't have the depth stop. I mean, more. Now here's another Lee Nielsen number one. Oh, and a Stanley number one beside him. It's hiding. <laughs> Cute little bird. You gotta love the number ones. Okay, let's move over here. Spoke shaves. Belfast no. Good to have you, man. Yeah, check out this old brace drill. Big old thing. A brace drill, breast drill. Winchester six. This is a really high angle transitional. Look how high that oh no, the frogs just popped out. Okay. It's like wow, I've never seen one quite that high. <laughs> but the, the screws. What in the world happened there? Oh, someone just pulled it out. Okay, I see. That's a bunch of axes, hatchets. I'd love to take a hatchet home, but I don't think it fit in my carry-on. Uh, there were a lot of theories about number ones or four, uh, but they were not just for kids. I know kids can fit them, but they were used by um, woodworkers too. This is actually a post drill. And the interesting thing about this, most post drills you run the bit down against the item on the bed. And this one, you actually pull the bed up against the bit. So you crank the handle to run the drill bit, and then you crank this to raise the bed up into the drill bit. Kind of a, a cool thing. Yeah. The number one is good for sitting on a shelf, but not for falling off a shelf. Here's some squares. I love these little ones. I, I bought mine thinking, wow, that, I'm not ever going to use that. It's not really useful. But uh, now it is the square I use more than any other. Um, gotta love good old squares. Some spring rails. There's a couple of full sets of bits here. Some big old axes. Then there's always donuts and food for sale uh, for free. Machinist case. Let's 
Is that a... No. Draw plate. I'd love to find a dowel plate. Some jeweler's tools. Check out this for gear making. Making tiny little watch gears. Let me see if I can get in here close enough. Making those tiny little gears. I would argue. Hatchets, axes, hammers, <laughs> safety hatchets. Uh, check out the Damascus on this one. That's pretty. Some more caves. Ah, tobacco shear. So you can slice up your tobacco. <laughs> yeah, these safety hatchets, this will actually fold up into the handle and then protect the blade when it's out. Oops, sorry, I'm missing comments. Yeah, I love this folding hatchet. It closes all up inside the handle. That's cool. Thank you, sir. Some gorgeous pins. <laughs> That's a hobby that'll consume. <laughs> yeah. So if you're looking for a four and a half. Oh, he got, he sold it. Oh well. So I wanted to show off one over here, but apparently it's gone. Several good four and a halves. 45 bucks. 30 bucks for a sergeant? Is that, no, 80. So it's 30. I buy it right now. <laughs> $100 for the Stanley. It's a pretty good price. Oh, check this out. This is a, uh, a shooting board plane. And so Stanley made the shooting board as well that this would ride in. And, have, and he had one here, but he sold it. Uh, so he just has this one. But uh, these are beautiful. And that's actually not a bad price for 51. Um, a lot of people are like, mm, 400. No, that's actually pretty good. These are hard to come by in a very beautiful plane. Uh, let's see. Let me come over here and get this before I move out there. So we've got another half dozen tables or so. Yeah, here's a bunch of really beautiful shoulder lines. Those ones are hard to come by. Some rare things in here. Check that beauty out. That's a gorgeous plane. Soul plane. Hi from UK. Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you in May. Gonna be in UK then. Some pattern maker chisels. Now oh, here's a fun one. These braces back here, this is the bit that goes in the brace. And so they would make this specifically designed to fit that particular brace. And then they would get the, the bits and put them in this, this uh, spindle. And the spindle would then socket into the brace. And so you would make your own um, connectors, the spindles, to connect to the, uh, the bits to fit your particular brace. Kind of a, kind of a cool system. Here's a, uh, a two-headed hammer. Why? Because. Oh, I've got my eye on this spill plane here. This is pretty. See how the, the blade is at this crazy angle. That is a plane that doesn't do woodworking. That plane produces spills. And the spill is the... the uh, the curl that comes out of there, and that was the, the re what this did is it just produced that curl so you could light fires. Oh, these are really cool. This is, this is a pencil sharpener, so you'd set your pencil in here, and this would shear off the tip of the pencil. Uh, this one also, you'd put the pencil in here, and you'd spin the crank, these blades would spin around and shear the pencil. Uh, so, some fun old pencil sharpeners. Really cool. Hi from Israel. Curious what the boards look like. I don't know what boards you're talking about. Sorry. 
Yeah, that, one, that one's got the the fence and up stop. Nice. Some really fun tools. Having fun yet? Oh yeah. Here we go up in here. Look at all these. Oh. A 607. Bedrock 607. I love one of those. Well restored, actually. Oh, the, uh, the, the Stanley number six. That's, that's in fantastic condition. Look how gorgeous that six is. On the 51, sorry. Curious what the board was like. I know I love for the, the board for the, the it's a it's actually a big steel plate that then this rides in and it has a groove that it rides in, so it's all specifically designed so that slides easily. Uh, I wish it still had one, I'd love to show that to you. How late is the show open today? Uh, I think five o'clock, though a lot of people are probably gonna be tearing down around two or three. There's a program that starts at eleven. So here's another 45. Oh, here I want to show you this. This is this is fascinating. All right, so this is a box of these, and they have these screws on top. These are molding plane uh, patterns. And so you'd make these and attach them to this plane body. And then with that plane body, you would put in a standard iron. And all of these standard irons then match one of these plane contours. So with this, you would put in the iron and you put on the sole to this to make that contour. And with that, you would then make your molding plane. And so you'd make your molding plane that would fit that. And you would make the hollow. Um, that you'd make this hollow, and then you would take that hollow and you would make its matching round. So that the hollow and round were precisely the exact same thing. So the hollow always made the round, but in this case you'd have the plane maker that would make the hollow. Um, so a really cool kit, and I would love to pick up one of those sometime. That would be a that'd be a fun video. How much the bedrock prices? Um, they, the, bedrocks are such a wild price range. I mean, some of them are cheap and some of them or not. Um, it depends on how collectible they are. So, uh, bedrocks are all over the place. Uh, you can't just say X. Um, the bedrocks are usually more expensive than, than standard planes. Oh, here's another number one. Uh, check this out. This is a chamfer plane. And so you'd have on the sole, has this V, and you would then slide the frog up and down to match the amount of chamfer you want. You need the body, you have all the bottoms. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. The, do you have all the irons for your bottoms, though? That's the, that's the big concern. A lot of people will have the, the wood um, soles, but they won't have the, the irons for them. A whole bunch more block planes, tongs, pullers, more levels. Oh, yeah, here's a bunch of iron, irons, plane irons. So if you're looking for that plane iron to fit that plane, here you go. Plow planes, some really gorgeous ones. I want to build a plow plane here soon. It is it is high on my list, and I want to build one like this and do the knurled nuts. Um, that that's something I want to make here soon. We'll see. Screwdrivers, files, chisels. Here we got some more around over here. A collection of saws, pig stickers, brass braces. Ooh, here's some infills. Odd question is is it all cash only? Yeah, people here basically only take cash. There's a couple people who will take a card, but most everything's cash. Explain the use of a plow plane. A uh, plow plane makes grooves. It's kind of like a Stanley 45, except for it just makes grooves. 
Oh, this is this is a cool plan. Check this out. Uh, this this is 90 degrees to the back, and the back is perfectly straight. Then in the back, you really can't see it, but there are markings. So there's a tape measure here. Then there's levels in here, so you can use this as level, or you can use this as level. Then there's an all here on the back, so you can scratch on it here. So you can use this as the square and scratch across the board. So it's an all-in-one saw that lets you do all those features. Um, kind of cool. I love the handle on this one. The figure is just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful tool. So, oops, sorry. Some more books. You ever looking for that book or the history on that tool? Some more braces, dividers, marking gauges. Here's some more molding planes. There's a cool compass plane. This one, you push this down and the whole sole goes up and down and the iron actually is mounted to the sole and slides through this frame. Interesting design. More chisels, molding planes, horns, more chisels. So yeah, that is, that's about it for this meat. Um, it is quite the gathering. <laughs> And if you do want to find out more about these, um, come on out. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments right now. I'm going to try and read them here in a moment. Um, but if you ever want to come out to these, they are all across the United States, and there are other ones in other places in the world. Uh, if you go to mwtca.org, you can see a list of the cities where these are at. Um, but if you want to find out more information about specifically where they're at or get invites to them, you have to be a member of the Midwest Tool Collectors. So you have to... Um, become a member of the club and that will give you invites. Uh, on top of that, if you want to find other locations, I have a map on my website. If you go to woodbyright.com, um, click on the tools tab, down at the bottom there's a thing that says antique tools. Uh, and on there I have a list of every place I know of where you can buy hand tools across the world. And I'm trying to add to it regularly. So if you know something that's not on that list, it's not on the map, um, let me know as well as a whole list of online sellers. Um, and those are from anywhere in the world. If you look for something specific, specific, you can go to one of those online sellers and they'll list it out for you. So yeah, um, this has been a lot of fun. Let me see if you have any questions. Um, I've got a marking gauge. This, um, no, the Lansing Show was bigger than this. The Lansing Show was about 60% larger than this one. Um, well, this has more user tools than the indoor Lansing Show. The outdoor Lansing Show had more tools than this one, had more user tools. Um, hammers are all over the world, all over the place. I mean, it depends on, is it a collectible hammer or is it a usable hammer? Anywhere from like a dollar to $500. Um, so you can't say, you know, hammers are this price. Um, but they're, they are, everything here is good to fair prices. You're not going to find anything that's overly expensive unless someone doesn't really want to sell it. And you're not going to find anything that's dirt cheap price because everyone here knows what they have. So you're going to be looking at prices that are good to fair and negotiable. Um, does she also have to become a member? Um, uh, no, uh, she could come as a guest. Um, well, no, spouses are also included in the membership. Um, so, yeah, she doesn't have to. Um, you, don't, you pay for one membership and spouses are, are, are added on. Um, what do you mean about outdoor show? Oh, um. At, um, at this meet and the national meets, the, well, this one is a two-day uh, long meet, and yesterday everything was outdoor, um, and we all were at the back of their um, trucks and trailers and things like that, and the outdoor ones tend to be the cheaper, um, lower quality, but more user tools out there, um, sometimes the bigger tools that people don't want to carry in, whereas the inside, it tends to be the higher price more collectible tools, um, the things that people really want to show off what they've got. Um, so at the national meets, and the national meets are three days long, so there's an outdoor on Thursday, and then Friday and Saturday are indoors. So this one, Friday was outside, and Thursday, uh, Saturday is inside. Uh, let's see, what's the next question? 
If you become a member, yeah, your wife is also a member. Cool. Well, I think that's about it. This has been a lot of fun. And if you do have any questions that I didn't meet, let me know. Um, you can see me. Uh, you can send me a message on my website. And I'm looking forward to seeing you at the next meet. I will be at uh, the one in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I want to say it's February, but I don't remember when. Is it March? You have to look on the Midwest Tool Collectors to find out when. Uh, but it's just south of Milwaukee. And then the next one after that is just down the road from my house in Loves Park, Illinois. So I'm um, hoping to see one of those. And I will also be at the national, the national meet in Peoria, Illinois. Um, that one I'm going to be doing a demonstration and a talk on Thursday. And that will be free to anyone. You don't have to be a member to come to it. Um, but that will be a good time. It will be... I'm looking forward to that one. So, yeah, I'll see you around. Let me just see if there's any last comments that I'm missing. I'm coming to UK in May for Maker Central. Cool. So I think that's about it. And until next time, have a wonderful day.